Have you ever felt lost, alone, or in need of guidance? Perhaps you were facing a difficult decision, a painful loss, or an uncertain future. In those moments, it can be hard to know where to turn or who to trust. But there is a source of comfort and hope that has stood the test of time, Psalm 23. This beloved psalm has been a source of inspiration and consolation for people throughout history, offering a powerful vision of God's care and provision. Today, we'll explore the meaning and significance of Psalm 23 and how it can guide us through life's challenges. Psalm 23 is one of the most well-known and beloved passages in the Bible. It has been translated into countless languages, set to music, and recited in countless prayers and liturgies. But what makes Psalm 23 so enduring and significant? At its heart, Psalm 23 speaks to our deepest needs and longings as human beings. It reminds us that we are not alone in this world, that there is a God who cares for us and provides for us, and that there is a way forward even in the darkest of times. Whether we are facing physical, emotional, or spiritual challenges, Psalm 23 offers a powerful message of hope and comfort. Before we dive into the details of Psalm 23, Let's take a moment to look at its structure. Psalm 23 is a poem composed of six verses or stanzas. Each stanza has a distinct theme or image, but they all work together to create a rich and multifaceted portrait of God's care for us. Here's a quick overview of each stanza. Verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. This verse sets the tone for the entire psalm, establishing God as our loving and attentive shepherd who meets all our needs. Verse 2 and 3, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. These verses describe the peaceful and restorative care that God provides for us, like a shepherd leading his sheep to a place of safety and nourishment. Verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This verse acknowledges the reality of suffering and hardship but also affirms God's presence and protection in the midst of it. Verse 5, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. This verse celebrates God's abundance and generosity, even in the face of adversity. Verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This verse affirms God's steadfast love and faithfulness, promising a future of hope and security in His presence. With this structure in mind, let's explore each stanza in more detail and discover the richness and depth of Psalm 23. The opening verse of Psalm 23 sets the tone for the entire psalm, declaring, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This powerful statement reveals several key aspects of God's relationship with us. First, it portrays God as a loving and attentive shepherd who cares for his flock. Like a shepherd, God leads us to green pastures and still waters, providing for our physical and spiritual needs. But being a shepherd also implies a deeper level of care and concern. A good shepherd knows each of his sheep by name and is willing to risk his own life to protect them from danger. In the same way, God knows us intimately and is willing to go to great lengths to ensure our well-being. The image of God as a shepherd also speaks to our own role as sheep. Sheep are notoriously vulnerable creatures, easily led astray and prone to danger. But when they are under the care of a skilled and loving shepherd, they thrive and prosper. In the same way, when we submit ourselves to God's guidance and care, we are able to live abundant and fulfilling lives. The second and third verses of Psalm 23 describe the provision that God provides for his sheep. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. These images of rest and refreshment speak to our basic physical and emotional needs. Just as a shepherd leads his flock to places of safety and nourishment, God provides for our basic needs and sustains us through life's challenges. But the provision of the shepherd goes beyond just our physical needs. God also provides for our spiritual needs, restoring our souls when we are weary or broken. The image of a sheep being restored to health and vigor after a period of distress speaks to the transformative power of God's care. When we are in God's care, we are able to find healing and wholeness, even in the midst of difficult circumstances. Finally, 
the image of God as a shepherd also speaks to his guidance in our lives. Just as a shepherd leads his sheep through unfamiliar terrain, God leads us through the ups and downs of life. The phrase, He leads me beside still waters, suggests a gentle and intentional guidance, one that takes into account our unique needs and circumstances. But God's guidance is not just about leading us to peaceful pastures. It also involves correcting and redirecting us when we go astray. The image of God's rod and staff, mentioned later in the psalm, speaks to his authority and discipline as a shepherd. Sometimes we need to be corrected or redirected in order to stay on the right path. But even in these moments of discipline, we can trust that God's ultimate goal is to lead us to places of safety and abundance. The opening verses of Psalm 23 offer a powerful image of God as our loving and attentive shepherd. Through his provision and guidance, we are able to find rest, nourishment, and direction in our lives. As we continue to explore the psalm, we will see how these themes are developed and expanded, offering a vision of God's care that is both profound and transformative. In the third verse of Psalm 23, the psalmist declares, He restores my soul. This phrase speaks to the deep and fundamental aspect of our being, the soul. The soul is the seat of our emotions, desires, and will. It is the part of us that connects with God and allows us to experience spiritual realities. The soul is often described as the breath of life, the animating force that gives us vitality and purpose. So when the psalmist says that God restores his soul, he is speaking to a core aspect of his identity and purpose. The idea of restoring the soul implies that something has gone wrong, that the soul has been damaged or depleted in some way. Indeed, all of us experience times when our souls are in need of restoration. These may be times of physical illness, emotional distress, or spiritual dryness. We may feel disconnected from God or from others, or we may be struggling with feelings of guilt or shame. Whatever the cause, when our souls are depleted or damaged, we feel a sense of disorientation and despair. In these moments, it can be tempting to try to restore our souls through our own efforts. We may turn to entertainment, distraction, or even self-destructive behaviors in an attempt to numb the pain. But these efforts are often temporary and ultimately unsatisfying. What we truly need is a restoration that comes from a deeper source, one that can heal the root causes of our distress. The good news is that God is a God of restoration. The phrase, He restores my soul, implies that God is actively involved in the process of healing and renewal. When we turn to God in our times of need, we open ourselves up to His transforming power. This restoration can take many forms, depending on our individual needs and circumstances. For some, it may involve a renewed sense of purpose or direction. For others, it may involve healing from past traumas or broken relationships. And for still others, it may involve a deepening of our spiritual connection with God. The restoration that comes from God is not always easy or comfortable. It may involve facing difficult truths about ourselves or letting go of unhealthy patterns of behavior. But when we trust in God's loving care and guidance, we can be confident that the restoration He offers will ultimately lead to greater wholeness and joy. The phrase, He restores my soul, speaks to a deep and fundamental need that we all have. When our souls are depleted or damaged, we long for a restoration that goes beyond temporary fixes or superficial remedies. The good news is that God is a God of restoration, one who is actively involved in the process of healing and renewal. As we turn to Him in our times of need, we can trust that He will restore our souls and lead us to a place of greater wholeness and joy. The fourth verse of Psalm 23 speaks to a universal human experience, the reality of dark times. The phrase, the valley of the shadow of death, conjures up images of danger, fear, and uncertainty. This image speaks to the reality of suffering and hardship in our lives. Whether we are facing physical illness, emotional distress, or spiritual turmoil, we all encounter moments when life feels dark and uncertain. But the psalmist does not leave us in the darkness. Instead, he declares, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. These words remind us that even in the darkest moments of life, we are not alone. God is with us, guiding and protecting us through the valley of the shadow of death. The image of the rod and staff is particularly powerful here. 
These were the tools that a shepherd used to protect his sheep from predators and to guide them through treacherous terrain. When the psalmist says that God's rod and staff comfort him, he is acknowledging that God is not only present with him, but actively working to protect and guide him through the darkness. This image of God's presence in the midst of darkness is echoed throughout the Bible. The prophet Isaiah reminds us that even when we walk through the fire, we will not be burned, for God is with us, Isaiah 43, 2. And Jesus himself promises that he will never leave us or forsake us, Matthew 28, 20. When we feel alone in the darkness, these promises remind us that God is always with us, ready to guide and protect us through even the most difficult of circumstances. Finally, the phrase, your rod and your staff, they comfort me, speaks to the comfort and protection that God offers us in the midst of darkness. When we are facing fear and uncertainty, we long for a sense of safety and security. The image of a shepherd using his rod and staff to protect his sheep gives us a powerful picture of the care and protection that God offers us. But this comfort and protection is not just about physical safety. It is also about the emotional and spiritual comfort that comes from knowing that we are loved and cared for by God. When we feel overwhelmed by the darkness around us, we can turn to God for comfort and reassurance. We can trust that He will guide us through the valley and lead us to a place of safety and peace. The fourth verse of Psalm 23 speaks to the reality of dark times in our lives, but it also reminds us that even in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death, we are not alone. God is with us, guiding and protecting us through even the most difficult of circumstances. When we feel afraid or uncertain, we can turn to God for comfort and reassurance, trusting in His loving care and protection. The fifth verse of Psalm 23 speaks to the abundance of God's provision in our lives. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. This image of a lavish banquet speaks to the extravagant generosity of God. When we are in God's care, we can trust that He will provide for us abundantly, even in the midst of adversity. The phrase, in the presence of my enemies, is particularly powerful here. It suggests that even when we are facing opposition or difficulty, God's provision and care are not diminished. In fact, they may even be more evident in the midst of our struggles. When we see the abundance of God's provision in our lives, we are reminded of His faithfulness and love, and we can trust that He will continue to provide for us in the future. But the image of the table also speaks to another aspect of God's care, the fellowship of the table. In ancient times, sharing a meal together was a sign of hospitality and friendship. When someone prepared a table for another person, it was a way of welcoming them into their home and their lives. In the same way, when God prepares a table for us, He is inviting us into a relationship of fellowship and intimacy. The fellowship of the table is a powerful image of God's desire for us to know Him intimately. When we share a meal with someone, we are able to connect with them on a deep level sharing stories, hopes, and dreams. In the same way, when we come to the table that God has prepared for us, we are able to connect with Him in a profound way. We are able to share our hearts with Him and to receive His love and grace. Finally, the image of the table is rich with symbolism that points to deeper spiritual truths. The anointing of the head with oil, for example, was a symbol of blessing and consecration. When God anoints our heads, he is setting us apart for a special purpose, affirming our identity as His beloved children. The overflowing cup is a symbol of abundance and blessing, reminding us that God's goodness and grace never run dry. The table is also a symbol of the future hope that we have in God. In the book of Revelation, the image of the wedding feast of the Lamb is used to describe the culmination of God's plan for the world. This feast represents the ultimate fulfillment of our longing for fellowship and intimacy with God. When we come to the table that God has prepared for us, we are given a foretaste of the joy and abundance that await us in eternity. The fifth verse of Psalm 23 speaks to the abundance of God's provision and the fellowship of the table that He invites us to. When we come to the table that God has prepared for us, we are given a powerful reminder of His generosity, His love, and his desire for intimacy with us. As we continue to journey through life, 
we can trust that God will continue to provide for us abundantly, inviting us into a deeper relationship with Him along the way. The final verse of Psalm 23 is a powerful declaration of God's goodness and mercy. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This phrase speaks to the unchanging and enduring nature of God's love for us. It is a reminder that no matter what circumstances we may face in life, we can be confident that God's goodness and mercy will follow us every step of the way. The word surely is particularly significant here. It suggests a sense of certainty and confidence. When we say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, we are not expressing a hope or a wish. We are making a declaration of faith, affirming our confidence in God's character and His steadfast love for us. But the final verse of Psalm 23 also speaks to the power of God's grace. The word mercy suggests a sense of compassion and forgiveness. Even when we fall short or make mistakes, we can trust that God's mercy will cover us and lead us back to the path of righteousness. The power of God's grace is often described as unmerited favor, a gift that we receive despite our unworthiness. This grace is not something that we can earn or achieve through our own efforts. It is a free gift that God offers us out of His infinite love and compassion. Finally, the last phrase of Psalm 23, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, speaks to the promise of God's presence in our lives. This phrase suggests a sense of permanence and security. When we dwell in the house of the Lord, we are at home with God. We are surrounded by His love and care, and we are safe and secure in His presence. The promise of God's presence is a powerful source of comfort and strength in our lives. It reminds us that we are never alone, and that no matter what we may face in life, we can trust that God is with us every step of the way. This promise gives us the courage to face our fears, to persevere through difficult times, and to trust in God's ultimate plan for our lives. The final verse of Psalm 23 is a powerful declaration of God's goodness, mercy, and presence in our lives. As we journey through life, we can be confident that God's love will follow us every step of the way, leading us to a place of abundance and joy. We can trust in the power of God's grace to heal our wounds, to forgive our sins, and to restore us to wholeness. And we can rest in the promise of God's presence, knowing that we are safe and secure in His care forever. In Psalm 23, we have seen a powerful picture of God's care and provision for His people. The psalmist compares God to a shepherd who guides and protects his flock, leading them to places of abundance and rest. We have seen how God provides for our physical needs, guides us through dark times, restores our souls, and offers us the fellowship of the table. And we have seen how God's goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives, leading us to dwell in His presence forever. As we come to the end of this psalm, we are invited to trust in God as our shepherd. The images that the psalmist uses of the shepherd and the sheep, the valley of the shadow of death, the table and the anointing oil, all speak to deep spiritual truths about our relationship with God. They remind us of our need for guidance, protection, and provision, and they point us to the one who can meet those needs in abundance. But this invitation to trust in God is not just a one-time decision. It is a daily choice that we must make as we navigate the ups and downs of life. When we face difficulties or uncertainties, we must choose to trust in God's goodness and provision. When we feel disconnected or discouraged, we must choose to seek out His presence and His love. And when we experience moments of abundance and joy, we must choose to give thanks and to acknowledge that all good things come from His hand. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank You for the powerful image of the shepherd that we find in Psalm 23. We thank you for the way that this psalm speaks to deep spiritual truths about our relationship with you. We acknowledge that we are like sheep who need your guidance and protection, and we ask that you would lead us on paths of righteousness for your name's sake. We thank you for your provision, for the way that you provide for our physical needs and guide us through dark times. We thank you for your restoration, for the way that you heal our wounds and renew our souls, and we thank you for the fellowship of the table, for the way that you invite us into deeper relationship with you. We ask that you would help us to trust in your goodness and mercy, 
even in the midst of difficult circumstances. We ask that you would help us to seek out your presence and your love and to find rest in you alone. And we ask that you would guide us on the path of righteousness, that we may dwell in your house forever. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today on Let Us Pray. If you or a loved one is in need of prayer, we invite you to leave a comment with your name or the name of the person you would like us to pray for. Our community of believers will join together to pray for you and for all those who have requested prayer. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Please share this video with someone who needs it. If you have any specific prayer requests, please let us know in the comments. We are here to pray with you and for you. May God bless you and bring peace and comfort to your life. Amen.